Vertex, Team 14969, and we're a community team located in the Bay Area. This is a first video in a series of tutorials on the basics of FTC. I'm Shashva. And I'm Ellen. And we're going to be teaching this class. Okay, so let's start with what IDE we'll use. So we're going to be using Replit, and then and you can use Android Studio later on. And it's good for testing and creating your teleop and autonomous code. And we'll go over that, what that is more in depth later in this course. But basically teleop is a driver controlled period in the FTC challenge. And it's where you can use the controllers and you program the code so that it takes controller input and moves the robot. Autonomous is another 30 second period in the game where the robot moves using only sensor input. So let's talk about what coding is. Computers don't understand the language that we use. So instead, we have to use languages like Java, Python, and C++ in order to communicate, communicate with them. There are grammatical rules that we call syntax. And there's basically, we list a list of instructions to make computers perform specific tasks for us. Um, for coding, we have to use problem-solving thinking. And the best programs are easy to read and the most efficient. There are some things you should know about Java. It's not exactly beginner friendly and the syntax is case sensitive. There's brackets and a lot of semicolons. And after every line of code, you need to insert a semicolon. And you should also never give up. If you feel like you want to quit, just take a break and then ask for help if you still can't do it. Now we're going to talk about problem solving. Coding is really hard. So in order to be able to code a program, we have to follow different steps. So the main way to program is to break down the main task into separate smaller ones so it's easier to do. For example, if you're writing a program about a number guessing game, you should separate into three points. How will the computer pick a different number every time? How will the user guess the number? And how will the computer see if the numbers are the same? Once you test out and run each of the parts, you can put it together in order to make your program. And you, you don't have to debug as much later on if you debug and slowly do every step. So here are the basics of programming. There's input, and it's what users give to the computer. There's output, what the computer performs and the value it returns. There's debugging, and that's checking for the defects in the code. There's an algorithm, and it's the step that outline how to solve a problem. A statement is an instruction in a program. A syntax error is a statement that violates the grammar rules of Java and so that's when your syntax is wrong, like you have missed a semicolon or you have a bracket in, in the wrong place. And all programming languages have different syntax. For example, Java has uh, brackets and semicolons. Python does not have semicolons and so on. And there's a variable and it stores a value. It's sort of like a bucket. And it's used, like, a, like I mentioned, like a bucket. And you can add something to it or remove something from it. So because we're using REPL, um, REPLit, this is what you'll see if you um, make an account. But if you're using different ones, you sh should have a class and then the public static void main, which we will explain what each of those does. And it looks confusing right now, but the more we uh, learn, the more it will make sense. So let's talk about classes. A class is like a blueprint that's just declared at the beginning of a pro program. And so the naming of the class is like this. You capitalize the first word of the, or you capitalize the first letter of the first word, the first letter of the second word, and the first letter of the third word. For example, variable exercises. The V is capitalized and the E is capitalized. And the class name must be the same as the file name, or you will get an error. And you can, you can, you should use curly braces, one right after the declaration and one at the end of the program, just like my, uh, shown here. Now let's talk about the main method, which is basically the starting points of which the program runs. Um, the main method also, like the class, is surrounded by curly braces, which encloses all the content. And at least for this course, all of our content will, unless, unless we specify otherwise, all of our content will be inside of the main method. Let's talk about compiling and running your program in Replit. So to run your program in Replit, you need to run two lines in the command line. Java C, then the name of your file, dot Java, and then Java, and then just the file name. And so, for example, we have defining variable right here. So you would run Java defining variable dot Java. Then you would run Java defining variable. Another example right here is Java C main dot Java and Java main. 
and then it prints that the program is ran. And so you should compile and run your program frequently because uh, it makes it easier to debug. So let's say you just finished writing a long program and then you run it and then you run into many, many errors in multiple lines. You shouldn't do that. You should, uh, after you finish writing one part of your code, you should compile and run it and then write the other part and compile and run. So if you do run into errors, you only get one or two errors that you can quickly fix so you don't get a lot of errors after you finish writing your code. So now we're gonna talk about printing which is going to be the first function that we know. Printing means that the computer will output something that you have inputted as your variable or string. So if you open whatever program, it should already say system.out.println, hello world. And this, is this function will basically print out and output uh, whatever you put inside of the quotes. So let's talk about formatting. When you're running a function within your method, you should always remember to check the tab, the case, the double quotes, and the semicolon. The tab is the four spaces between the last line and the next line. For example, here you need to have four spaces between the public and the system. You should also, also check the case. Make sure that it's capitalized when it should be and not capitalized when it shouldn't. And you should also make sure that you have double quotes whenever you want to have a string printed. And also make sure to have a semicolon at the end. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to go to a printing practice. So for this practice, write a Java program to print hello on the screen screen, and then print your name on a separate line. Um, we will give, so just pause the video and then we will show the answers uh, soon. All right, and now for the answers to the printing practice. Uh, so for this, everything should stay the same, except you should have the system that out that print line with hello in quotes, and then you should do the same with your name. Um, so on the right side, this is what it should look like when you print it. Obviously, the name will be different. And this is the output that it returns. So now let's talk about comments. So comments are lines of code that are not read by the computer, and they can be made anywhere in the program. They're used by programmers to make notes on their code, and it's easier for others to read, so you can explain the code to them while they're reading it. Should be they should be used when declaring a class, creating a method, and declaring and initializing a variable. Like when you declare a class, you should say, this is a class to test this, and this is the method that does this, and this is a variable that holds this. And in Replit, they look gray, and from now on, you should use comments to make your code a lot cleaner and easier to explain to others. Now, there are two types of comments, um, and the first one will be single line comments. So basically, just put two forward slashes right next to each other with no spaces in between, and this will be able to make you comment for a single line. Um, so this is only used when you want to make write a short note that's not too long. So above, it's written, this is a comment meant to show how you can make a single line comment, and that's an example of how to comment. Um, you can also comment out lines of code that you aren't sure about or when you are testing something. So now let's talk about multi-line comments. To create a multi-line comment, you can use a forward slash and an asterisk in the beginning, and in the end, use an asterisk and a forward slash, like this. And they can span as many lines as you want them to. For example, this is a multi-line comment. It can be as long as I want. You can see the slash and the asterisk and the asterisk and the slash. Now we're going to go on to talk about variables, which is a key part of Java and any programming languages. Um, so we're going to go over the basics of a variable. We're going to learn how to define and initialize a variable and the naming rules of the variable and types of variables. So let's talk about the basics of a variable. A variable's purpose is to store a value. And that variable's value can change depending on how you perform operations on it. You can add or subtract values to the variable. You can also relate different variables to each other in an if loop. You can say, for example, if x equals y, then do this. Now we're going to talk about how to define a variable. So before you can use a variable in Java, you must declare what it is. So this will be give, giving it a memory location and storage. Um, so you can have operations done to the variable, and that will affect the memory location, and its value may change. And obviously, there should be a semicolon at the end of the line, like most of the things that you'll write. So for example, you have the type, which in this case is string, and then you have the name of the variable, which is first name in this example. 
So now let's define a variable. So create a new file in Replit and create your own variable for your school's name. Compile the program to see if you get any errors. And this is what it should look like. String school name. Now that you know how to define a variable, we will talk about how to initialize a variable. So this is basically used to assign a value to a variable after it's declared. And this can always change, you can always change the value afterwards later on or later on the code. And there should be a semicolon at the end. So if your uh, name of the variable is first name, then when you initialize it, you just write whatever you want in semicolons. So if the name is called uh, first name, then you'll say equal to, and then whatever your name is in quotes, and then a semicolon. Let's talk about printing a variable. You can print the value of a variable in a system.out.println line. So all you have to do is put the command and the name of the variable. Now here you can notice that you don't need the double quotes. This is because uh, uh, another value or string or int is already stored inside this variable. So you don't need the double quotes. If you want to print some text and then the value of the variable, you can simply do the command system.out.println and you can put in quotes, the name of my variable is plus the variable name or the name of your variable. Now we're going to talk about how to define and initialize a variable in one line. If you already know what your value is that you want, um, you can define and initialize in just one line instead of having two. And obviously there should be a semicolon at the end. So in this example, we have string and then name and then is equal to whatever value of uh, the name holds instead of using two lines. Okay, so now let's talk about variable naming rules. So in the first, the first character of the name can't be a digit and you should not use symbols or spaces. This makes it harder for the computer to read it. So the conventions could be first, second, third. For example, you wanna have the first letter of the first word lowercase and the, and the first letter of any other word uh, uh, coming to be uppercase. For example, date of birth, the D is lowercase, then you have uppercase, uppercase, here you have lowercase and then uppercase, same here. Lowercase, uppercase, uppercase. And you shouldn't use keywords in the name. So now we're gonna talk about the basic variable types. We're just gonna, introduced two to you now, but there are a lot more. So the first one is called strings, which we have in earlier examples, which store text and which stores text. You should make sure to capitalize string, uh, the S should be capitalized and everything that you add into the string should be uh, surrounded by double quotes. And we're also gonna be talking about integers. Um, integers can store any number uh, between the two on screen and it's the preferred data type for variables with numeric values and obviously there are other data types so we'll, we will be working with these two for now okay so let, now let's do an initializing activity try and make a new file define and initialize an integer variable for your age and define and initialize a string variable for your last name and an extra challenge is to do one in each line if you get stuck try watching over an integer and strings again and we have another activity, uh, create a class and define two integers and one string. This class must print the product of these two integers along with the string. Now change the program, instead divide these two integers and print the output along the string. Um, so it should look like system.out.println num1 num times num plus test string or something like that, but your variable names could be different. So that was the end of this tutorial. We will keep making videos like these on FTC and Java programming. So if you want to stay up to date, make sure to check our channel. So we hope you like this and we hope it was helpful and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.